Hello, this is Luka Perkovic and I, welcome to the podcast for today. I will be doing podcast with my boss, Carlos Ocelote <laughs> Rodriguez, and we're just going to have a nice chit chat. <laughs> that wasn't too bad for the first time. Like <laughs> That wasn't actually too bad. So, well, I mean, I'm, apparently I'm here at the invite of the host, uh, Luka Perkovic, and I brought with me some food. Some, uh, we're not sponsored by Pringles, but you know well, what? Well, there is some of their own there. <laughs> Luca, <laughs> Luca was Luca was hungry, and, and I read the message. Perhaps a bit too late. I have, of course, some tobler on. Uh, I read the message a bit too late, and and the problem is that he ate a kebab, right? So I brought all this cool stuff for nothing. I think he'll eat some some trouble some, some tobler still. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, yeah. But anyway. This is Carlos Azalor and welcome to the G2 Podcast. And today we have the legendary mid laner, one of the best players, not in the Western world, but in the world as a whole, in League of Legends. He's been with us, with uh, uh, G2 since uh, the G word, with, which nobody can mention, times. <laughs> the G word <laughs> too, that nobody can mention. Um, and uh, and uh, yeah, we've, we know each other for quite a long time, actually. We know each other quite a long time. So, how, what actually got us? What was our first conversation? Do you remember? Well, I know that you stepped down after the qualifier thingy, after the game G two, <laughs> after G two lost in the, the qualifier. previous G two. I, I like after that. After the two thousand fourteen G two lost in the qualifier thingy, and I was talking to Kasim back then, and then they wanted to like try out middle, basically me, and then I got in. It was like this December of two thousand fourteen. And then Jesus. we were like preparing for the challenger series, like qualifier thingy. Yeah, I don't know. How, yeah, we, had, we were playing, preparing for that, yeah. And then we ended up like changing half of the roster. Uh, <laughs> I remember that. And then we had Hiva as well new, at some point. No, that was like next roster. And then oh, next roster. basically we lost to Gilius team that was with Hiva. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, Carlos went by the motto, if you can't win them, just buy them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, that, that moment so, I learned so the lesson. That, so then he bought out the team that was like quite a tilt team and then they lost. So I was like three months break, I mean, three months on Millennium. And after that, I was back on G2. So I've been basically on G2 for like four years now. Four years. So it's been quite a while, yeah. So um, let's look back at the uh, G World 2 uh, times. Um, do you think I was the problem? Because as soon as I replaced myself, things started looking slightly better. Like, uh, be, be honest. Like, I, 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 I didn't follow. I, I don't know. You just didn't follow. I mean, I didn't really care. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I was like, that those guys who was like, it's really fine to see Oslo lose or anyone famous, basically. Like, whoever is famous, it was yeah. like, it's just fine to see them lose. I mean, still is, right? Whoever is famous, it's fine to see them lose. So it was just really funny when I, I I was like 15, no, I was 16. And then, yeah, I mean, it was like quite a good opening for me. Yeah, I, I remember that because everybody was looking at my career as in, I mean, of course I had good moments, but the, the last year was not that good, obviously. And, um, and whoever was going to replace me after that was going to be the replacement of, of myself because I would have just left the game or whatever, right? And that would have been like a big deal, actually. So everybody was looking at who is going to replace this guy, right? This, this old star washed up player. And, and it ended up being you, actually. And, and at the beginning, um, I don't think that many people knew you, actually. It was just about solo queue, right? Mostly. No, I was just like high level in solo queue. Yeah. And then you started doing crazy shit. So how did it all come to, uh, how did it all come together? Like, how, what do you remember from those moments? You know, the first, Official games in G World Two, uh, in Challenger Series, etc. I mean, like looking back at it, you know, I was pretty good back then compared to the rest. But it's like I was still not like very good, of course. Like my first moments and my first team and. Uh, oh, by the way, this is white chocolate. I have to try this one. Yeah, I never tried this one. This is insane. So, it's really hard to say. I was like really, really young, and uh, I don't know. I was pretty. I was pretty high elo, so I was always confident in my like my ability to win against like other players. You were so. like very good friends with um, Febiven as well, right? Around that time, or you played a lot with Febiven, right? I mean, we, we were just like we were just. I was high elo since the beginning of season four, and after at some point, I was playing because I was playing so much league. I was playing against Febiven and Nuke mostly every single game, and then I got like friendly with them, 
you know, made connections to the back basically, and then we were like meeting up on TeamSpeak uh, during solo queue and just like having fun, like basically. And then I was just like grinding it out, you know, in solo queue and like amateur league. And I was always like, I was always pretty cocky <laughs> on TeamSpeak. And they, no, were, they were just too thinking, much. yeah, I mean, still same, yeah. And they just, they just thought I was a cocky kid, you know, but then I ended up like <laughs> smacking all of them. <laughs> so uh, around that time, actually, Nuke Deck, I mean, Nuke Deck has always been good, by the way. Like, we will speak about Nuke Deck at some point, but it's so fucking weird. But um, Faven was really, really good at that time. Like, he was insane, I remember. Like, really insane. It felt like that. Yeah, he was. I mean, season five, I thought Nuke Deck was better than Faven. I thought he too, actually. Like, the whole time. Well, I was because uh, I was playing them in solo queue, but then after MSI, Fabian seemed to get a lot better. And then I remember when Fabian came back from season five worlds, like I played him in solo queue, and he was like actually like so fucking good back then. Yeah, I don't know what happened. <laughs> he's still, he's still <laughs> wow. good, but back then he was like really, really. I felt like he was really, really good, you know. And I agree. I remember I had a clip where he he was like streaming off season every day, and a clip where like I played him really hard on the blank. And I was like so so proud of myself, you know, because it was before I even joined LCS. So I was like really That's happy. That's amazing. I was really proud of that clip, you know. I still have it. It's like I, I need to show it to you. It's like oh so yes, please please do <laughs> please do. Um, all right. So it, now now connecting connecting the, the dots a little bit. So when you when you joined the team Gamers Two, we have to say it for the sake of conversation. <laughs> oh, Carlos, <laughs> Carlos, <laughs> when you joined. Um, how did it feel to kind of be in that position where you were um, kind of, uh, you know, you were very, and you are very close to the way I communicate, you know, in terms of character, you're very cocky, which I was as well, and I am uh, as well. Um, and, and also as a player, super aggressive and so on. How do you feel to kind of get into those uh, boots? Was it daunting to all of a sudden be out there playing official games and knowing that your predecessor, even though he was not that great by that time, uh, was who he was? I mean, uh, I, don't, I don't remember. I don't think I really cared that much. It was more, for me at the beginning, like, I didn't really think I would do the, be doing this full time. Like, I was actually... Interesting. I, when I, when I, I mean, I always knew, like, let's say, back inside of my head, I knew that I wanted to do it, and I wanted to be pro. But in Croatia, it's like so, like, not meta, or like, <laughs> no one has done it before. So it's like sure. it never actually like crossed my mind seriously, right? It's more like it was more like a kind of dream, you know, come true or like dream just of becoming a pro player next year. It was like until I became a pro player, it, like just the realization when I started playing LCS, it was like, wow, I'm moved out and wow, like <laughs> what is this life, you know? <laughs> so uh, when I started, it was more like, more like to because I like to compete. I mean, I knew I like to compete in league at least. I mean, I like to compete in everything I do. But I, League of Legends was like just fit for me at the time because I was like escaping real life with League of Legends. Mm -hmm. So, and I had like some problems with my knees and which made me play more League. So, mix of my competitiveness and the stuff that brought me to League made me be really competitive into on leather, which made me be really competitive into a team game, like a team leather, like amateur team game. And then that shifted from making like, I don't know what it was like. In Challenger series that summer I made like 4k euros or something and I was like Whoa. <laughs> also in Croatia money? that is like, a what is this money you know I was like oh <laughs> that's a nice summer uh, how is it called pocket uh... Uh, summer pocket change you mean yeah, yeah like uh, not change but uh, like pocket money like the one you like yeah like pocket you, money yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. and uh, I was like wow and then <laughs> I mean I knew I didn't really like to go to school like many other kids right? oh man I, I actually also hated it yeah like, I love learning now but back then it was like, isn't that fucking like that yeah. is that is insane actually. Like, as soon as I, like two years after I left school, like last year, I realized, oh, I really love to learn about stuff. Yeah, and I, I would like to like get educated as well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, I, was I, mean, school, I was just leaving school, <laughs> skipping school twenty four seven, thinking all of That's my professors. That's so ironic. All my professors were fucking stupid, <laughs> and but yeah, they were not. And uh, so it was that some that September of two thousand sixteen. No, it was 15, 2015. When we call her for LCS, like even when we call her for LCS, I was still like, wow, I actually call her for LCS. But actually before all of that, uh, I, the reason why I had a dream of becoming pro is more because I heard already in the early spring that Origin wanted me. 
Yeah. I heard in early spring that Origin wanted me while I was still on G2 that Peck is gonna retire. So I don't know how yeah. someone knew that or however, you know. Yeah. But I knew that they actually want like that they were gonna want me. So I was I was just keeping close to them because in the hopes of like playing with like yeah. Zenimitian, right, you know? Yeah. And the team. And then quarter for LCS and then there was some like let's say some complications with like <laughs> going to origin which i ended up really really good 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 but i was really crushed at the time because uh, of course like if a team reaches top for roads and you just qualify with, with lc to lcs with a guy who uses flash bear slap <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's hilarious. of course you want to join the top four team in the world you know so yeah that's how my career started <laughs> That's actually hilarious. Um, so I, I like to. <laughs> I remember Kikis was Fucking telling me Kikis, like he man. was playing Fizz Jungle in screens. Oh, I remember a that. AP, Fuck. AP, AP Fizz Jungle, and then Meta was like Rexai Gragas, and he would tell me like, "Yeah, Fizz is a tank, bro. You can you have E and then Zonia and then E again." Oh, <laughs> I was yeah, like, I oh, remember it's not that. A tank. I remember that. Uh, I remember that. We we actually that was actually the only time in my life I was a coach actually. You remember that? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, you were a good and coach. He, and, he, and he was actually downstairs. He was right yeah, here, but he downstairs. Here, yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Uh, we had this coach, Leviathan. What the fuck happened with that guy? Like, he just, he literally just disappeared. Like, I, he was I supposed to coach it, to come to Berlin to coach the team. And I, he I literally disappeared. I remember. Some, um, was yeah, I mean, some that, family that, that, problems or something? I don't know. I don't remember, but it was just literally disappeared. Yeah. So I was like, what the fuck? So, and, and then we had to, like, use me as coach, which was uh, yeah. hilarious. Yeah. Um, but it, it was nice. I mean, I had a lot of fun, actually. Yeah, I had it was a lot good of fun. because, yeah, you were a player before, and we were, like, all kind of new players. So I, had, was... I had a lot of fun. And um, then I remember, I mean, it was, like, 10 days here, boot camping, I remember. And I came here with Rose, my, my lady, uh, and it, it was it was really tough at times because uh, we had a couple of, uh, well, we had a player, yeah, you remember, that uh, he was on tilt uh, pretty much 24-7. Yeah. I, you remember I, that something? I mean, I remember a bit, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he was, yeah. Yeah, Smitty J yeah. was just tilted out of his fucking mind, like every day. It was insane. Um but well, it's. I mean, he was he was really good. Like, yeah, he was. Yeah. You remember against SK Gaming in the qualifier for LCS, we were winning two zero, right? We were two yeah. zero up, and then they they came back two two. Yeah. And then he did in the two two. It was it was that moment, right, with the ribbon play, or was it in the semifinals? No, I can't remember. That was before. Before, right? That was before. Yeah, yeah, it was a moment in which we needed to win that game, and he had ribbon yeah. top. That was against denial. Yeah. And he, yeah, denial. Yeah, you're yeah. right. You're right. And he. Com Completely demolished them in front of Drake Pit. Yeah, yeah you remember, I remember that? I remember that. that was Jesus, player. that was insane. And then against SK, actually the last game, he played really well. Yeah, yeah, he was playing right now. They, they were playing Kenan top, and he was uh, Freddy was fitting a lot actually with Kenan top. Oh, don't, yeah. don't do it that was well. Was Smithy playing Rice? Uh, yeah, he was playing Rice. Oh yeah, and yeah. you were playing Oriana. Yeah, I remember. I, oh, you remember? We actually had a conversation in the peak and van phase actually, where. Um, like we literally had a conversation about, you know, when it's two two or when the game is like so important, it's like either you qualify or you lose your whole kind of everything. Uh, Oriana is like the best champion. You remember we actually had that conversation because you just farm, farm, farm or whatever, and then you just really powerful mid game, and I, I, we literally I, had that conversation. I really don't remember. Yeah, we really had that conversation, really and, and you said actually that's true. Just pick me Oriana, and we didn't have any Oriana game in the screams, not one Oriana game. Maybe not. I mean, I, I actually, I, I really don't remember. I just think like at the time, Fox was playing like only Victor and Oriana. Yeah. So I just wanted to like ban Victor and pick like one of his champs away, and then he was like playing something that he was not. Wait, very who, who was the millionaire again? Fox. SK Fox. Fox. Is true. What the oh Fox? Oh my god, it's true. It's true. Yeah, he was actually very good back then. Like, yeah, I, he was I, like, he was I think good. he he. Some games like when he be Victor, he was sure like outperforming. But that was like pretty bad back then as well. So. I remember that. I got really good in the off season. Like, yeah. After. Uh, Thing. So um, like, I like to ask questions as if I was the fan watching this, right? I always try to do that because the questions I may ask, you're, uh, I may ask you, uh, have a different, you know, in terms of uh, where I come from and we know each other for a long time and so on. For that reason, I like to kind of look for if, if I was a fan and I was watching this, what would I like to know, right? And I like to understand from your point of view, what made you be able to succeed as a player or what is today what are the attributes that are allowing you to succeed as a player 
do you think it's just the DNA? Like you just have it in the DNA? Or you think you work towards that? Or you, what, what, what is it? I think it's for sure some part in the DNA. Like, I, I'm not gonna lie, it must be, you know? I think most of my family members are like this. So, uh, another part is like, I don't know, uh, just, I guess, circumstances that come together and like people in life that like have influenced me. In like who are those way. people like for example you will help me out when i will have like hard times uh season six worlds and it's also like mitty was like the big factor why i am like who i am this year so i just like i really learn a lot from from mitty like why he's amazing why i'm able to like to succeed like enjoy life more and because like in this competitive environment it can get really hard when you are 16 hours a day <coughs> surrounded only by league and every day <coughs> goal and every day like mission is your like your life just focuses around league or at least for me so you have to like find but like you just learn i don't know to find balance to enjoy small things more uh to be a better teammate better competitor <coughs> uh, then to separate your actual like esports life with real life in the off season and like do stuff with friends and family even like it can be esports friends you know it, it doesn't have to be just like friends from old life you know i mean old life like before you're a pro yeah, yeah. so <clears throat> i just learned a lot of stuff and i get i mean part like every with every success there is always like you can say partially like lucky you know a little bit a of little course. bit of luck everywhere you know so and then i guess a lot of hard work and like it, i don't know if you can call it hard work at the beginning because it's more like at the beginning i was just like you enjoyed it so much i loved it so much and i didn't really know what i was doing i was playing just by instinct i was just playing by a spamming game and playing on instinct right and then it transferred to not that much hard work in the summer split because i was like really cocky and i didn't really know, know how to like i was just like really bad mindset right just a like kid you know and then failure into like telling myself that I'm never gonna fail again. And uh, then it comes like the point where you like start working hard and on like on yourself. And um, that after 2017, like I feel like I've like the, having me having four new teammates is like the best thing that could ever happen to me, even if we didn't have the same result as of right now. We, we still could and we have potential to. So it's just like this year is actually like the best year that's, that has happened to me. And I know. And, and, and why do you think that? Because I just learn, like, I learn how to control my emotions more and more and more. And I learn how to, like, give more of myself as well. Like, just participate more in team stuff and what are you and helping myself and my teammates. Like, mostly this year has been on me helping my team become better team and last year was more on me become helping myself become like better player like speaking to other mid learners and finding my best my best thing or like watching replays of like how to how can i become the best mid in the world or something you know and this year i feel like like i am maybe not the best mid in the world but i am for sure like there up there and if i go on an international tournament i will like show that i'm capable of being the best in the world so I feel like my game knowledge and my game understanding is at that high level that I can like help, I can help people understand it better with me. Okay. So you, you, you know, when we speak, you and I a lot, um, you always mention how helpful was Mitty for you um, and, and kind of how, I mean, uh, from my experience, Mitty has been insane as well, right? Like the, the way he is and um, it, it's not just what he brings in game, it's more about you know how he is uh, yeah. he just points out mistakes and is completely an unemotional so he creates this culture in the team of pointing out mistakes without getting attached emotionally to it and i feel like that's super yeah, like, important. i can't do that for example i mean i can but i feel like when i do it it's not emotionless you know i feel like when i do it i'm actually like i'm i be i like i'm being hard either on myself or on my teammates and that maybe sometimes too much so it's for me a lot harder to find a balance where I feel like Mitty was also having like had times where he was like flipping out or being like aggressive, but it's like 
less than me and like he was like handling it way better I, that's how i feel at least from like just out, if i put myself outside perspective so it was just like even right now i still like speak to him very frequently and he tells me some like i like maybe i tell him some advice and he tells me a lot more stuff that can actually be helpful for me i feel like at least when he tells me something i'm like i think about it i'm like yeah i mean he's actually right like yeah i, I should do it like he says you know and then and then it like motivates me again you know and yeah so what do you think na absolutely destroys players uh because it's undeniable that na is not a better region yeah <clears throat> and it maybe some years it could have been like equal region at some point uh but i mean i guess when when tsm i mean when we beat tsm last year in msi it was msi world no it was MSI, i mean that, of course. i think 2016 um, and it was like as like pretty good yeah i mean because we were like really like every EU team was really bad but also 2017 actually uh in msi 2017 like tsm was actually good like they had double yeah. lift and like no they, they had Walter though what no mm -hmm. you sure yeah they had Walter on that split because double lift took a break oh yeah Shit. i mean he didn't play bad like the tsm was pretty decent back then yeah 2017 msi they, they, they were pretty decent yeah they were. but at no point i feel like there was no year in which na was really ahead of europe or at no. least clearly ahead of europe yeah, yeah. um so it cannot be that the players in north america are that high quality it cannot be that the teams are so good that whenever europe goes to north america I'm they, sorry i just saw you flexing a bit maybe i promise i'm not flexing you want me to flex <laughs> motherfucker this is flexing no, you were like scratching yourself and like flexing no because i, I no, had... i'm joking i'm joking <laughs> <laughs> it's a flexing podcast that you <laughs> um, continue <laughs> this, this can be yeah. this is not serious man <laughs> and, and after this podcast is Barack Obama I'm fucking serious I'm gonna come with a suit <laughs> so this makes no sense so um <laughs> So why does NA destroy players? Mm, so, well, I think I mentioned this in my interview with Travis. It's I think the biggest, the big reason is part the part where when they have solo, when they have solo key practice, the ping is like thirty ping higher than in you. Basically, there is like sixty ping. You think is that important? I, I think it's fairly important because like champs that require actually like reaction speed. Like let's say Yasuo. I mean, I, I, in the meta I was playing Yasuo in a solo queue, and I can play it really well in solo queue besides the wind wall because the wind wall actually requires you to use it in a specific like 0 0.01 right. like, time second which is like really important so there's just for sure some skill shots or some like things with mechanics where the ping affects and then on top of that there's like a lot less player base i think and then there's a lot of one trick ponies who play for fun a lot of streamers who play for content and not to like actually improve or like play meta champs then even like because of all of that, probably the pro players are like not really keen on playing too much solo queue and just prefer to like play solo queue to chill or try new champions out. You know, there's just not much competitiveness in a solo queue, and that's there for all the reasons. I feel like the skill level is like way lower than it is in EU, or like even I mean Korea, of course, Korean solo queue is just like insane. Is that much better than Europe? I mean, it's like just in EU there is like good players, but in Korea there is. 10 times the good players player base like there's just every game you get like 90 percent of the games you get you will get really good players in eu it's like more coin flip a lot more coin flip and the reason is because korea has a lot more pro players like the every team almost has 10 players then they have players for lms japan uh china right and every, every region basically well eu has only eu so it's just a lot harder i mean eu solo queue i still like eu solo queue it's just like solo queue overall can be really coin flip like it can be like either your team stomps or enemy team stomps and like you can get much other games some sometimes you know but if you like stay strong mentally and just keep practicing you will get something a for example Mitty Mitty <clears throat> was never a, a great solo queue player right like even when he, in his best times is the truth he never like had a lot of fun playing it like he I was mean, always yeah, like cba he had, he had fun i mean he was like mostly smurfing i guess on uh, on like playing jace and stuff ari mid and inting like on smurfs i mean he was playing like he had like a master account for sure maybe he was i mean uh, yeah he was not challenger no he, 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 sure. defi he definitely had a, a master account. i mean he was like he, he actually like mitty 
you would think that he's I mean like he would always say he doesn't play as much but he was actually playing pretty decent amount of games like when we checked we were checking solo his stats last year and he was playing like I mean less than at all, like rest but he was like doing more stuff outside he was doing right. gym and stuff so he was like using more time on himself which is really good and he wasn't actually playing that much less like only a few like a little bit a couple of more games a couple of less games than us mm -hmm. so okay that's not bad so let's imagine uh, first of all you, you say that this some is in the genes but you think it's in the genes in terms of eye hand coordination or reflexes or in terms of competitiveness that you competitiveness. have competitiveness okay yeah so you think you can train kind of how fast you are and things like that to a degree uh i mean probably yeah but you you, uh, you never uh, cared about it you just played and you became good but i'm I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find kind of reasons as to why you became reason, good. like i feel like games require more brain power i mean <laughs> for sure require more brain power than sports right <laughs> and i wasn't like super good at sports like, i wasn't like very talented at sports so i have to be talented at something else so i feel like i'm more talented at things that at things that require me to use my brain instead of using my actual like motoric muscles like right thinking really like yeah like i don't know playing football or something you know? yeah. I, I could never i mean even if I feel like even if I tried really really hard at football, I could never be a, like a professional football player, you know. As a, whereas of I feel like if I try at something really really hard that's not sports, like it actually requires me to like train my my muscle, motoric me memory, and everything. Like you know, mm -hmm. I can be really good at it, you know. So so um, because you you were a much different player before than you are now. Now you're more reliable. You're reliably very consistent and good, and. And you still make big plays, like you haven't lost that, but perhaps it's more calculated, right? Yeah. More calculated yeah, risk. For sure. Um, what what do you think are the things you learned that you didn't know before? So that's certainly not part of your DNA, but things that you learned that helped you get into the position you are today. Because you read a lot of books, you you just you try to learn as much as you can. What are those things you think you learned uh, that helped you the most? Uh it's so hard to say because like now I'm more like ingrained in that knowledge mm -hmm. so i would say it was a mix of like i don't know a mix of everything like a mix of reading a bit talking to people learning from people and pro like a big 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 part of it is self-reflection like after every year i like you know season i like think so much about what to do better next year or how how was i this year and that's a good point self-reflection like, so after 2016 like i had like so insane like self-reflection i was like I figured it was time for me to grow up, you know? It was like, I had really bad, um, like, problems with my health. Like, I mean, not really bad, but I was not really healthy. I was not even healthy, you know? I didn't really care about diet or, like, I don't know, getting vitamins or <laughs> getting air or getting water, <laughs> enough water. Yeah. Or, like, I just didn't know this. I mean, I, not, I didn't know, probably. So I didn't care, you know? And on top of that, I was really unreliable because I thought of it probably more as like a, I don't know, like my team is so insane and I, I, I don't know, I don't have to do too yeah, much. You, at the beginning you were a bit um, daunted by how good Mitty and Sven I mean, they were like were. really, really back, re really, really good back then. I mean, they were like so much better than anyone else, you know. I, I, I still think like they are really, really good. I agree. Because of how smart they are and how they work, but just, they just can't show it, you know. So basically, yeah, after 2016, I just wanted to be the most reliable member I can be. And then I had like, yeah, really, really good year, right? I was like really good at every tournament I played mm -hmm. the whole time. Yep. I mean, I had some bad games, right? But like everybody, but I was, it's insane. I was trying to like go from first going from playing really safe and like reliable winning my lane. And then as the weeks would go on in Spring Spring, like let's say like week seven or week eight, I was starting to feel like really confident with my the way I'm playing for my team. That I could like play more aggressive and more aggressive. And I was pushing myself more and more and more. And then I just like learned over the year how to play better and learn more macro and learn more about other roles. So by the end of 2017, like I knew so much about bot lane, jungle and top lane, which I had no idea before because i was just learning because like mitty 
Mitya apparently just knew every role in the game. So. Could, could, could you play a different role if you wanted to right now, to perfection? Uh, I mean, or to the level that you play mid lane? Uh, I think with some time. What is I some could, time? I, like, with some time, I could play support or AD carry to the level where I'm. I'm I mean, I don't know if at the level I'm playing mid, you know, it would take me some more time because I feel like for support, it's all about using brain. Mm hmm. And like the mecha all the mechanics of champs are using brain. Like there's not really it's like I don't know Alistair combo or like when to walk up and try to hook someone. You know, or, like it's all about like vision and brain. So I feel like I could be good at support and AD carry as well because um, I just played a lot of AD carries the last three years basically. Even before I made mid, I actually made AD. So like the, my whole life basically, I've been playing AD as well. And I feel like it fits me as well. So I could play those roles. And then jungle, I could not play, I think. There was somewhere I wanted to play jungle, but jungle is like so... It's stressful. Like, if I would see... Right now it's about like, timings and about paths I mean, and about... Know, like, it's just if I see someone die to gank, which I call... Like, I really have respect for junglers. Like, seriously. Like, like I, like, I tilt so hard in solo queue when I, when I ping and my, my laners still die to gank. So I like, I really, I really dislike jungle. Like, I don't know. I, I, I could not, <laughs> I know how, like, I know how jungle works. I know like the macro sense of jungle, but I would just not want to play it. And for top, like, I could for sure main this role, but like top players actually are so good. Like, I, like, I, maybe like two years ago, I could see myself manning top and like, Beating all the top players in the EU, and maybe you know, like, I, could, what, I could see why myself. is Wonder so good? But like, Wonder, like, when I see Wonder play, he's like so, so fucking yeah, good. What, it's what, like, what makes it's him like, good? He just plays champs very well to limits. So, it would like for me to play top, it would take me so much time to learn all the champs and matchups. But if I would play top without just laning, I can play top because I know where top player should be on the map and what he should do and how to pressure the game and how to like, I know how to win the game. But I don't know how to lane and play the champions like to an extent where a top and I can actually play. So yeah. Because sometimes the laning phase can get extremely tough, right? Like you yeah, double like level playing, two gang, with, playing with flash. jungler, like two v twos, like team fights. Like, yeah. like you also like not only lane, like even after lane, like, you have to know when you win one in one, when you lose one in one. Yeah. So if someone tells me now you win one in one, I can actually like play the lane. You know, it's not, this level you win, and I can, I can like play to the where I can actually like trade because I know how to trade, but. I have to know all this stuff, you know. Someone has to like plant the seed in my brain, and I can. And like, the cooldowns exactly, okay, and the damage I mean, exactly. Okay, now he has this. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, this is how I. Yeah, I will be AD carry support, top jungler. Okay, jungler last for sure. Okay, interesting. Let me try this. So, and, and do you see yourself in the future one day playing a different role potentially? Yeah, I could. Yeah, right. I, I I could be playing. I mean, it's kind of a thing where, for like. I want. Not, I don't really want to roll sub, but I would like to see myself challenge myself in another role because, yeah, I I feel like I'm like really really good at mid. So if I could be like really really good at another role, then I would be like, I would be really insane, you know. So that's something that I definitely I will maybe look for in my future endeavors. Yeah. Yeah. So, you and Reckless from Fnatic have have become the face of the ULCS, right? Mm. I guess you can also add maybe Jankos, maybe Hansama, but like you guys are the face of the ULCS right now. And uh, many of the games uh, that people like to watch, they watch it because you guys are there, right? Um, Fnatic probably lost a ton of viewership when they benched Reckless or he benched himself, whatever, no? Um, why do you think that is like and 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 i would love like because it's not just playing well like what is it that makes you guys you know stand above the rest mm. and i'm sorry i should have made the question longer so that you can swallow the well i think can you the... say the word swallow if it's related to food you can right yeah. swallow the food well <laughs> <laughs> i think it is mostly the play. I mean, I know from my perspective, because both of us just have shown like really, really, really good performances. I think for Reckless, it's like different because he's been playing for so, so, so long. Like, I don't know, since, like he's been playing for six years. Like he's been playing before he was even eligible to play. He played for Fnatic right, in a tournament. 
So he just lets like this like I feel like even before like before I feel like League was I don't know more more watched or something like because the, all the older players had like pretty big fan bases like you, I don't know, Snoopy, uh Vicod, uh Frogan. True. And Reckless is a player well. that played yeah, Xpeka and stuff. And Reckless is a player that played in that era and in the new era as well. True. It's so, so true. Like, That's a very good point. Been, Holy shit. Like he's just been all over the time. And he's like probably the most popular player in the in the world with with their. Then uh, why is it still back? No. <laughs> why is it still back? Not known. <laughs> Bravo, I'm uh, sorry. I had to. Still whatever. back. I love you. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with Bjergsen and Faker, like everyone knows Bjergsen, Faker, and Reckless. You know, <laughs> everyone knows like those two names for sure. Yeah. So yeah. Interesting. That's actually super interesting. Also Bjergsen, because Bjergsen, in the, his beginning of his career, he was in Copenhagen Wolves, right? Yeah, yeah. And then, He's like, also been playing for a very, yeah, very, for a long, long time. time. Just like Reckless, really. Yeah. That's a, that's a really good read, actually. Uh, which makes it even more, uh, even nicer that you became what you became, uh, you know, after that moment. Yeah. Um, so, you know, in, in, in terms of um, the game itself, like you as a pro player, how much do you like this kind of you know metas changing or uh, the game just changing evolving how much do you like that i don't know for me it's kind of a coin flip decision because i i can adapt to anything and i actually like to be really flexible but it makes it a lot harder for you to practice the game with your team and get really good as a team when the meta changes so often and like so many small like changes and like in items champions and stuff can make you like pick up new champions and I have to play a completely different style to what you're actually used to playing. So it's just a really hard thing to do. Like that's why we were really successful before because even meta changes, we were playing for two years together. So we actually like in the previous iteration of G2, we played every single meta and we played everything. Like we, I remember actually, that. we actually just played everything and we had to get good at everything, you know, and that's what we have to do here. But it feels like here, like this year, meta changes so much more than it has before. So that actually it makes it hard for us to practice one style and get really good at it because it just changes up again, you know? And you have to play new style again. Like right now meta is changing again, for example. So we are having like some troubles like in improving really fast, which we can. But it's just like, it's not easy, right? You have to like learn how to play with new champs together, how to like drought together and how to just play the game you know so it's like completely different styles and for to just shorten it up for me as an individual i like it i don't mind i like when i just play two champs because then i get really really good at those and i can play any matchup anyway and like be confident in winning but i also like the fact that i can play 20 champs and like let's say pick my mid in fourth or fifth pick and give my team kind of an advantage in draft and then have a pick that will not be like top tier pick but I will mm. still play it mm. in terms of that I will like have as much impact as any mid. So that's what I like those kind of aspects of meta changes. So do you think um, Rift Rivals helped you or was it a bad thing for, for you guys' team? I don't think it was a bad thing. Uh, I mean, the only bad thing was the jet lag part. <laughs> right. I think, I think that anything else is just good for us to get some more practice. Okay. So you think you learned from being in Rift Rivals um, more than if you wouldn't have one there? I mean, I'm not sure if we learn, but we just got practice, right? I mean, you, you hopefully you learn in practice, right? So we got to like test our strategies against NA and we got to play against other players because people we play in EU is like always the same, right? So we got to see that actually like European players and teams are way better than teams. So okay. we are actually more grateful for practice we get in EU. Interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, because when we returned, I remember our picks and bans were uh, for a couple of weeks. So, uh, you know, maybe not that good. And I remember you guys had conversations. I mean, this is not on camera or anything, but I remember you guys had conversations about, um, you know, lacking this or lacking that or prioritizing that champion when he shouldn't have been prioritized and things like that. Do you think that is a byproduct of not having been in Europe during that time, like 10 days or whatever? Because there's a world in which if you would have been in Europe, you would have known where the EU meta stands exactly, and you would have known what to prioritize better. I mean, it could be that, but I think it was mostly our fault that we were actually like playing bad drafts, not really like complaining on NA. It was like mo mostly us just picking the wrong champs, I think. 
yeah, not being too mindful about what we can actually pick and drop and how we can like make the team come better and help each other. So if, if you would have to go back in time and Rift Rivals happens again, knowing what you know, you are right now in the league, is it 8-4? Eight, eight, no, we are 8-4, yeah. 8-4. Know that you're 8-4, but before you left, you were 7-0. I think it was 6-0. Six, six, yeah. um, knowing what you know, would you have went? Probably not. I, I think when I went, actually, I thought we were playing six games at least. Like last year, we were actually playing only three best of ones. Only three, so, yeah. so we didn't get that much practice either. So I feel like going to NA to play three best of ones is like meh, or like four, you play one in the final. Mm -hmm. And it's like whatever. So... I would have problem that gun, yeah. Interesting. Because now that I think about it... Because I showed actually, I showed my Yasuo there, and then after Rift Rivals, Yasuo was banned almost every single game. Oh, shit. So, and then when I picked Yasuo, we lost. <laughs> so, it's like, I didn't get much out of my Yasuo. Yeah, one. but that game was weird, man. Like, that was so weird. Like, yeah, you were yeah. doing just fine, but they were... I mean, no, okay, at the beginning, they completely screwed you over, I remember. was level 2. The dive level 2, was, was it? What, what game are we talking about? The one you picked, Yasuo? No, that was that was uh, you were talking about Schalke against Fnatic. Oh, really? He got dived. Nuke got dived, and he played Yasuo. Oh, yeah. yeah, I was yeah, I was. I was just farming with Yasuo, and there was some like. Yeah, I know you. You were fine. You were like zero zero one or something like that, and like, super zero, fed. zero zero and just farming. Yeah, yeah. just, just and super was farming. Was getting handed over. I mean, we talked about the game. It was just like yeah, bad game. So, n not knowing what you know now, you know we came back, and since we came back, it's two four essentially. Yeah. What can you tell uh, which, whoever's watching uh, you know, about the team? And, and you, know, you don't have to get too much into detail, but you can get into this if, if you want to. Well, it feels like we are just struggling to find consistency right now with our play. And maybe a little, a little bit our draft, but mostly our play. Because we have like one really good game against Mises, for example. Mm -hmm. Even we had worse draft because of actually almost, we almost won the game. Mm -hmm. And then we had really bad game against Jarrett. Then we have a really good game against... Um, again, I mean, not a really good game. We have like pretty decent game against Vitality because we played well as a team. And then stoned by Rocket. And then really good game against Plyce, who won against Misfits and Fnatic. And then get stoned by Schalke. So it's just hard for us to like find consistency right now. And we are working on it. We are actually like working extra hard. And we are like putting time into review after scrims and talk more about draft and talk more about what should we do to actually improve it, uh, ourselves, our communication in game. So I'm personally working extra hard as well to like get us out of this and make sure that we can actually go into playoffs ready and take the title. Because I think it's so easily doable. Like I feel like the EU teams are not as good as, I mean, they're, I think Misfits and Fnatic is pretty good, but I still feel like they're easily beatable. Mm -hmm. Like they're more yeah more easy to be than last split for example so yeah yeah last split uh was that was a mess with ad carry so strong it was actually ridiculous like ad carry could just 1v9 that's ridiculous yeah and the fact that in, and, and if you have an ad carry which is done for that then uh you have a hard time you just get yeah. three items and you lose yeah that's what happened pretty much we were winning two out of three games i remember early game like two three k goal ahead nothing we can do he just got three items and then yeah, I mean, we were like, we were just not sure what to do as a team as well. And Monty mm -hmm. was just a little better team. So, like, with Reckless being really good and them being a really good team, like, they knew how to play very well around him, whereas we didn't know how to play around our bot lane at all, which is something we we're working on this split a lot more than last split. So, and bot lane is like, bot lane jungle synergy is like super important. Yeah. Like, for example, last year we were like, not very good at playing around top lane, you know? So, yeah. So, um, if you had to point out our best, like our strengths as a team, which ones would those be? Mm. I, I think we are just, it's so weird. Like, we are like, when we are, if we have winning lanes, like, I'm sure we win the game. Like, we are really good at pushing our advantages now. Mm -hmm. Like, last week we were really bad at closing out games. And like actually like pulling the trigger when it matters but now i feel like we're actually good at pulling the trigger and knowing how to play better macro after the first turret falls down like when the game actually starts to play out like whether if it's their team or our team but and we have really strong like laners so 
like especially top lane, like he's really really good. So yeah, I don't know. I think we are just strong players and strong team right now, and we should like teams should be afraid of us still. Even even like even when we get stoned by like worse team than us, we I, like we can win against the best team in the league. Or what, what, what about your but... mental uh, resilience? Uh, in other words, do you think we will we will see a better team when playoffs come into play? than in these best of ones kind of scenarios and uh, do you think that we have the mental strength to um you know be able to win in a bo in a bo5 yeah for sure i mean like i can't speak too much from my teammates right because we only played two best of fives together right that's true so the buy i don't really know too much about my teammates yet you know we are still a fairly new team but for me like i love best of fives uh I'm like really calm in them and I know like for best of fives I'm always ready to like have my champion pool ready and even a pocket pick if possible you know and then I know when to pull out what and I, I can I, I can get a pretty good track of how enemy team plays after the first game already so I just feel like I can kind of like download the opponents really fast and in best of fives it just feels a lot easier to play than best of one in best of one you can like lose early game once and you just lost you know you lost the match mm -hmm. But in best of five, you lose early game one, and then just win the next three games, you know. So it's for sure a little better. You, you, you think? I mean, games must be harder to come back this this split than previous split, right? Yeah, like much harder. For sure, yeah. I mean, this split is like if you lose one Nash, you're very likely to lose the game. I don't, I don't know what's the winner with the first Nash, probably like eighty five percent or something. Must like be around there, yeah. It's like really really high. So. Yeah, you basically can't lose the first Nash. <laughs> That's basically it. Like if you lose first Nash. Then you are just very lucky to lose second Nash. I mean, for after first Nash, first Nash you will lose like half of the base, and after second Nash you will lose the game. So, yeah, can't lose first Nash. That's basically the point of the game. Yeah, that's definitely not good for the viewership. Definitely, like with I the mean, fact that if you know what's gonna happen in the next ten minutes, in the middle of the game, then uh... yeah, but it's also like people like didn't really like watching like fifty minutes games, you know, yeah. where it's like some team fights and stuff. So. It's hard. It's hard to like make make league a super balanced and entertaining game. You know, you will have to make it like Vernash is weaker, and then again the games will be really long and clown fiesta. So it'll be more fun, but like less like harder to close the games. So it's just really hard to balance the game like league. I, I like the way the league is in terms of that it's actually changing. So nothing is like too OP for a while. Like at some point, always like Harold gets a bit nerfed or buffed. Nash gets a bit nerfed or buffed. Drake gets a bit nerfed or buffed. So it makes you like change a bit of style where like pro it has more dragons, pro it has more barons and like pick for that, you know. It's just like Riot does I think a good job of like changing the game so it's not stale and it makes us like pro players more 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 entertaining to watch but then and play. But then there's like so many changes and it gets like too much. Like they they should like this year it was like just too much. I yeah. see. So if you would have to make a guess, uh how would you like who is gonna get first, second, third this split? At, um, in playoffs? Well, it's hard. Like first we'll get BG2. And then for second and third it's hard because it depends on who we are playing in semifinals. Right. So if we are playing Misses in semifinals, it's gonna be Fnatic second. And if we're gonna playing Fnatic in the semifinals, it's gonna be right. Misses second. Yeah. But you, you, it's you think we will get the we will end up like with how you see every team. You think that Getting the buy is uh, so getting first or second is uh, very attainable, or, or or you think it's gonna be tough? I mean, it's hard because we fucked up, so it's very low chances that we actually get the buy. Like we have to pray on. Actually, no, no, no. If we win, I think if we win against Fnatic this week, we have, there's high chances. Like you have, have to yeah. Play. If you no, win, against... we have to play against Misfits as well. Yeah. So basically, like, we have a kind of tougher schedule than Fnatic does. Fnatic Misfits... already played against Misfits. Yeah. They did. Oh. Yeah, and they won. So it's like they, we have a tougher schedule to get a buy, but it's doable. Uh, but I don't really think about it too much. I don't think it changes much. Okay. So, so in case that we we don't get the buy, it could even be potentially positive. Like yeah, it could. Like for example, like Origin run in Spring Split. I mean, sixteen. Uh, like they were like our really run boosted. in in. Uh, we remember we almost lost against Splice. Yeah. We were two two, and then we ended up winning three two, uh, and we, it was in quarterfinals. Yeah. With, with Mitty and Sven. Yeah, yeah, and we ended up winning the whole thing with three O misfits. I think it was at the end. Yeah, three O H two K and the misfits. Yeah. So there's a world in which actually playing quarterfinals is a good thing for sure. Yeah, it's you... like playing planes the roads. You know, it's really like it's really stressful. Like it actually is really stressful. Like playing planes or 
match like quarterfinals because if you lose you're just not even playing third place like you're just so doomed you know um, but or planes you know if you don't get out of planes like you're like the worst team ever but it's like it gives you kind of the mental boost and you get practice on stage and you get like more comfortable with you and you get more trust in your teammates like there's just like so much positive stuff but there's also like a lot of stress so it's a kind of like just payoff you know i see so if you so let's imagine okay um year 2019 okay and you're playing worlds and uh and you win it what is the skin you pick i mean i would probably pick jack z of course like i think like <laughs> that skin would like make me so much money like imagine like g to z like with oh my samurai, god that's like, actually insane so like the g to z would like make it would be the most sold skin in the world that's actually insane. Sure. oh my god and the dance you, he can just take a guitar what about that yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's you fucking can, yeah, amazing. Yeah, you can, yeah, yeah. That, that's that's a good one. Yeah, I will. He takes do a that, guitar yeah. and, and then rolls to that. Yeah, and then he plays a song that you that you like. Yeah, yeah, we can do it. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, that's that sounds really fucking good, actually. Yeah, that's now, now I already want to roll. If I didn't <laughs> did before, now now I'm really motivated. <laughs> that's awesome. So, I, I I mean, unless you want to say something about League of Legends or the team or anything like that, feel free. Um, but I like to in the last part of the conversation. I like to ask you about non League of Legends stuff or non, you know, whatever the person I have in front related stuff. So you want to say anything about League of Legends, or you're you're um, done? Something like fuck you, caps. I don't know. Just, just out loud. I I don't really have. Okay. I For mean, Jankos, fuck you, Jankos. That works always. I mean, yeah. I mean. I would actually like to like praise players, you know. I think like my teammates are really good. And I think like, there's also players in US that are really good. Like I really think that like for example, Cups and I are like really, really good millionaires. And there is also players like Niski, Nuke, and Sankux as well. Oh, Niski like, is really, really good. good. Like there's there's actually like EU mids are like a lot better than NA now, I think, than the, the, what it was before. I felt like before like Jensen and Jensen, Bjergsen, Bjergsen, yeah, like, were way better. But I really feel like right now people, EU, EU means they improve so much. And even when I play like... Which they are EU means as well. But when I play against Korean means before, it's like... I feel like I get like actually more competition here in like middle department. So it's just really... I hate the fact that people like disregarding EU. EU, for example, like last last year. Last last year. I mean, especially, especially last year. Like last year, everyone was saying like how fucking shit EU is. And like when we win, like when we would win four splits in a row, people would say just because it's like yeah, I mean, but just because region is shit, you know. That's Origin and Fnatic fans. I but mean, that's it's what actually we like. It was so hard to win four splits in a row. Like no one has an idea. Like I mean, three zero misses in finals. Like there's the there's the misses that like went three and two against SKT and almost knocked out the best team in the world, you know. And it feels like people are like just destroying our like what we actually accomplished by saying this kind of stuff where like EU is shit you know I, I was actually like I remember like reading like the raid comments or Twitter comments like holy e, like Mrs is so bad or something but Mrs like played their best and lost you know and the way that we played that series was like so high level that like it makes you mean the series against SKT or which one against yeah, Misfits oh like, last, like last, okay, okay. zero finals you know yeah it, dude like, that was it insane makes, it makes enemies look like they're inting and we are like playing this way, you know. So it's just like, it's it's people, like normal people, they can't understand like how good we were playing. So I would not, I would just like like if people didn't like diminish our results, on terms of saying EU is just bad, you know, because that is not the case. So yeah, that's, that's a, basically yeah. That's a good point. I, actually, before we we move on, um, in regards to worlds, um. I see very often teams that are significantly worse than their opponents or their kind of counterparts in the same region do much better in worlds than those. Mm -hmm. Maybe sitting, maybe yada yada yada, right? Um, what happens in worlds and maybe MSI sometimes uh, where the best teams don't necessarily do very well and the teams that are not that good maybe learn fast and all of a sudden they're good. Well, it could be many things. Like, for example, there's one thing I actually like I read from Abdo in an interview, which is really smart. Like, Worlds is all about each team basically prepares for two, three weeks their own meta, whatever is the best, whatever they think is the best, what chat champions and the way they play. 
and then it's a face off of like who prepared a strategy the best and who gets proven wrong. So when you get proven wrong, it's about how fast you can actually adapt to the right thing and play well. That, that's all that Worlds is about, actually. And it feels like sometimes the teams are like just crumble under pressure. Sometimes, and they meta just better. Sometimes they're not fast at adapting. And sometimes they're just playing worse players. So it's like hard to actually say what it is every single time, because every time is something different. Like for us, I don't think we were choking. But I think we in were the like, last words, I mean, yeah, I think yeah. we were like a bit too slow at adapting to meta, but we adapted and we were like pretty, pretty fucking good. And it was just like the one game that took us away, away from group, you know. But it's like whatever, you know. Now, whereas team like Fnatic was zero four, and then we're like in a really lot worse group, but they still had like they got they had like the right thing for them, you know. Going same with Cloud Nine, yeah. Like Cloud Nine was always losing to DSM. No matter what, but they still kind of outperform TSM revolt, right? So it's I don't know if you were pointing at TSM for example for that one because like TSM was supposed to make it out of group, yep. right? So that's just weird. I, I, I like, definitely think thought, that G like, two and TSM got fucked in that, worlds um, very often. Yeah, I mean, I I, I think that V thought that TSM was gonna. I mean, TSM should make it out. Should have made it out of that groups, you know. But I think two thousand six and TSM were like a super good team. Yeah, and they were like in the same group we were, you know. So. Yeah, it's, I guess, seeding as well. There, there, there can be a lot of Yeah, stuff. honestly, seeding is so wrong. And the reason is because I feel like this seed number one should be able to choose something. Like, um, choose at least one team of your, of your group. Yeah, yeah. Or, right? Uh, yeah. Um, and because if it's based on seeding and a team just got so much better in three months' time or whatever, it's just, or two months' time or whatever, it's just not fair, right? You should be able, the seed one should be able to choose who he has, or at least part of who he has in the in the group. Otherwise, where is the seed for? I mean, what is the seed for? I mean, then like every seed has to choose. And how, do they, how do they do that, you know? I guess you can. I mean, it's like, for sure something else should be changed, right? You know, I don't know. It's, it's hard. It's, I mean, it's hard to make it like fair or yeah, something, you're right. you know? It's like... I thought Thorin did a, did a pretty good read. Um, I, I didn't see it, you know, because I, I don't know much about tournament uh, brackets and like how to make a good tournament, but Thorin should be for sure experienced. I mean, he's, he's fucking smart with this thing, yeah. definitely. Um, okay, then we can move on. So, what is uh, your favorite uh, movie of all time? Or say movies, say top three. Oh, this is really hard because I actually I watch TV series a lot because they're like shorter and I can watch them over time. And I get really into the this series, is a good point, or, into, or like into the characters and into the series. I can like connect more. I feel like I used to watch movies before, but it's like I don't know the movies that come like on top of my mind is like I actually I like Christopher Nolan movies oh, like, of so course. much, like all of, like all. He's of amazing. Them. So basically, like I don't know, it's just it's even so hard to pick. Like every single movie I watch from Christopher Nolan is like we had a Batman was Christopher Nolan, right? Yeah, 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 yeah like. I really like The Dark Knight. Yeah, amazing. I I, I don't know. I like Inception. I I like um, Interstellar. I, I, sh I like uh, Interstellar. I like the uh, uh, the, sh uh, the Shawshank Redemption. Oh my god, that's I amazing! I love The Shutter Island. Uh, Shutter Island. Oh my god, yeah. We, we just, Man, that guy is insane. Yeah, we just rewatched actually insane. Memento recently, like oh. two days, two nights ago or something. You will kill me. I haven't watched it yet. Really, Memento yes. is really fun. I, it's really fucking good movie. Like this movie is like, it, it's just like. The way he makes movies is so insane. Like I don't know, he's like so high IQ. Like you can see the way he so makes high IQ. <laughs> the way he makes like movies like so, so real solo IQ. Like he's so high IQ. Like uh, like holy shit. And yeah, I I like. Okay, so you're a Christopher Nolan. Yeah. Movie. Actually, was in um, Dunkirk as well. His. Uh yeah, I think so. That was a pretty good movie. I, I liked know, it. I watched the movies. It's really good for cinema. Like I watched it in cinema. It was like really hype. Where did you watch it? I watched it, I watched it on, the, on the plane, but I loved it anyway. Really? Oh, yeah. It's like I mean, in cinema with like the sounds and I don't know, the big screen and dark. Like, it's so insane. Like, and, it, and you like, do you like uh, Marvel movies, the new ones? Uh, I mean, I like Marvel movies, but they're like more of like oink movie. You know, you go and watch it and you're like, oh, it's fun. They made some good like comedy, some good action. And but every time you know what's going to happen, basically. I mean, I love Avengers. Like, I love Avengers, like the new latest Avengers. I love this movie. Infinity War? Huh? Yeah, Infinity I, I love this that's movie. That's amazing. That, that's, that's the best. That, that's like, that's a quality superhero movie. Like, I love this movie. This movie is like, for sure the best. I mean, you know, the, 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 best the, guy, the guy that plays uh, Thanos, 
It's yeah. the same guy that plays uh, the the bad guy from that De- from Deadpool. Uh, really? Yeah. Uh, how is he called? The bad guy from Deadpool. Um. How is he called? Uh, Cable. Oh yeah. Cable. He plays. Oh. A, he's the same guy. Oh really? It's called Josh Brolin, and the guy is like I don't know. It's it's old, but he's he's really good. He's insane. Like yeah, yeah. there, I saw his workout plan, which I I. I can't follow because it takes too long. He trained like three hours, four hours a day. But really, yeah, yeah. What the to, fuck? To get that, but yeah, yeah. He was training in the in the morning for one hour and a half. He was doing mobility and like potency and things like that. Like you know, like moving these these heavy things forward, like rushing, like sprinting, like jumping around, and then at, oh, at, during the evening. And here, there is me who can't leave the house when there is thirty five degrees outside. <laughs> 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 but he can't play Yasuo for shit. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> Josh Brolin can't yeah. play Yasuo for shit. Um, and then during the evening, he was doing two hours and a half of actual weightlifting. Like, Holy shit. yeah, yeah and, insane. and um, yeah, it, it, he, his personal coach, which was also insanely big, he was like, this guy is insane. He would come here and just wreck it every day and blah, blah. I mean, no shit. He got so big. Yeah, he got he's so huge, yeah. big. Like that cable guy, that's yeah, insane. Yeah, yeah. Like like you could see <laughs> veins that I've never seen in my life, you yeah, know? Yeah, it's true. It's insane. And he has like a picture in Instagram. You can check it out. It's Josh Brolin. And also, he's really funny. He's like self deprecating all the time and um, making jokes about himself and just being fun- uh, funny. And he has a picture actually in front of the mirror. And like the apps are so developed that they're like weird. Like, you can see there's something wrong in there. Like there's just muscles that should not be there. He has like a bicep in between the fucking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll check it out. I'll check it yeah. out. Yeah. No, that guy is amazing. Do you watch Deadpool one and two? Yeah, I watched. Yeah, I love that. Oh, I I love Deadpool. Yeah, I love Deadpool too. I think it's like the... so f- so funny. I like it. I, li- I like I just like the humor. I, I, Some I people don't that. like it, but I like all the jokes, all the kind of jokes there is in there, and I like the actor a lot. I think he's really. Oh, yeah. I think he's really like perfect for for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched him in some other movies, and like he's not always. Me- meant for that role yeah. but like for Deadpool he's like he's Deadpool you know but you, like, you, you, know, you know the story behind like no. the guy is the number one fan of Deadpool because Deadpool has always been like a funny guy yeah in yeah. Marvel storylines or yeah. whatever and he was always since he was very young he was a fan of Deadpool oh. and he was pitching all the time for like years and years and years but to really? Marvel to make that movie because he's the only character he really saw himself as oh this because is, that's, he's like that's really, that's really insane then. yeah that's because like, he was actually, making yeah. jokes all the time and like but but in marvel wanted to take a more um marvel ish or kids friendly approach yeah with deadpool but he was like no no no. like i really need to you need to let me do my thing yeah and he was like making all these insane jokes and like uh, he's really insane yeah he really is amazing that guy is amazing really yeah. good and uh and one of my favorite movies actually is um uh thor ragnarok actually it is have you watched it i watched it I watched it's, it. I love that movie, man. It's one of the best movies for me. Like it's, 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 it's so amazing. It's good, yeah. It's good, yeah. It's so insane. Um and and what else? Do you watch this this show um Sherlock Holmes? Yeah. You like that? Just Sherlock, right? Oh Sherlock, yeah. Sherlock. It's just Sherlock. Yeah, the one with like the mini the mini movies. Like yeah, it's like one thirty. I mean yeah, one hour thirty yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah. I, I, lo- I love this show. Yeah, I love the series, yeah. But, it really yeah. like blows your mind. Like yeah, it's, it's very well edited and it's very well filmed. And yeah. that Cumberbatch, it's called guy. Uh, is it Benedict, yeah, Benedict Cumberbatch? Cumberbatch or, yeah, Cumberbatch. That guy's good. Yeah, he's really, he's really good. good. Yeah. Okay. So, and, and then shows. What do you like the most? I'm assuming it's like classic, like me, Spartacus, Vikings, stuff like that. Yeah, I are... love, I love Vikings. Oh, yeah, of course, I know. Oh Wait, shit! You, know what, you watch Vikings? Yeah. No, I, I, I watched like two seasons and I loved it. I really loved it. We yeah. need to watch for. I, I, I don't want to because I know what happens and I don't like that, that uh, you don't like are it. you serious yeah i know yeah, i don't know this is the best you know this is like actually like the best but i, I love the guy so much like i can't yeah I, he is really, ins- he's I, really I, I can't actually, this is the reason why i follow the series like once it happened i was like okay i will have to find strength to follow him yeah. follow it for him <laughs> follow so, it for him yeah so yeah i got really i get really connected to the car like that's that's why i love series you know i like spartacus i like the vike i like vikings a lot can you actually production can you make sure before we say any of this you make like a flashy spoiler alert Vikings thing to make sure people don't watch in the next 30 seconds. I mean, it was kind of, a yeah, spoiler. but yeah, make sure, make sure that it appears beforehand. Yeah. And, uh, I like, okay. So I like game of Thrones. 
of course. I like uh, I like Westworld. I haven't watched it. And uh, I like uh, I like the Spartacus series. as well, right? Of course. Yeah, Spartacus. I watched Spartacus. Yeah, I like it. That for yeah. me is my favorite of all time. It, it's is I love. I think season one of Spartacus might be the best season of series I've ever watched. But after that, it gets a bit worse. So I don't like rate it as my like one of my like top three, you know. But it's still good. I still like it. I just liked I don't know, the first the first uh, the first guy. The first part of was yeah he was really like poor guy man. he actually yeah. died yeah, in real know, life know, oh yeah. my god that's so bad and he was like really like meant for that role i don't know he, he was, was insane like, he was like yeah he was really shredded he was so, handsome but in yeah. an alpha way yeah, exactly yeah exactly and the other guy was like a bit like felt like he was not Spartacus, you know? Yeah, he was <laughs> you know, a, like some once, goofy guy that came in. saw this guy, and the next guy is like, he's not Spartacus. Yeah, he's not, he's not. <laughs> it took me like the whole season to get used to him. Yeah, so, true. yeah, I love Spartacus. I like um, the 100, actually. 100? I haven't watched it either. Yeah, it's like, uh, it's a really good series. It's, I mean, it's like, it's like kind of, fa- it's kind of fast-paced, and it's like, it's just sci-fi, you know? So... I mean, no, is it actually called sci-fi? I mean, it is, it is sci-fi, yeah. yeah but, it's like, but it's like not... I just saw it's a really good story. Like, it's about like 100... Like, the Earth was destroyed, and after 100 years, they sent 100 people to, down to the Earth again to, okay. like, re-explore it. And they were, like, they've been... Your whole humanity has been living on, like, an arc in space. And then... Oh, shit, I think Rose watched, watched it, and, and I, 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 uh, I took a glimpse of it. Um... Is it the one that they start finding out people in the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's, like, it's, so, uh, it's like so fun. It's, so, it's like so entertaining. It's really entertaining. I mean, like, I know that they're like really stretching the story, you know, because it's like really watched the series. So they're like... But that's a problem for series and because... Like, but in the car- exactly. And like, sometimes people, like, st- series, like, stretch the story, but you still, like, get to see, like, how characters evolve, you know, from, like... Like, even, like, the actors, like, the actors have to evolve as well, you know? They have to go from, like, playing different roles before, like, playing like more evolved role you know and playing different character basically like because of like all the circumstances that happen in series i mean i just like series sometimes oh i love peaky blinders oh i i watched that as well i i really like peaky blinders yeah it's it's, it's just really fun it's really peaky fun. blinders yeah, yeah i i was like trying to copy the accent but my yeah, team, my, Croatian my, trying my to team British. didn't like it and i couldn't really do it really well <laughs> My so, team really didn't like it. They just bullied him for the accent. <laughs> yeah, I'm more. It's more like I was bullying them. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yeah, I mean, I watched quite some series. Yeah, I love Friends as well. Oh, Friends. Oh shit! You it's, know what? It's the best, really fun. It's really. Was the best character for me ever yeah. from any? I don't even like series, just movies or whatever yeah. in general. You know, Ari Gold from uh, Entourage. Uh, no, I don't know. Man, that is like the most hilarious. Like you will just laugh. Like your stomach will hurt because it, he's. I, it's, I think I watched this movie, but like a really long time ago. So it, it, this so show is actually... the, the show is uh, Colin Torridge, and yeah. it's about a, a an actor that is very known, and he has his entourage. So his group of friends that yeah. follow him everywhere and so on, right? Because that's what you do when you have a lot of money and you're an actor. You just bring your friends over. Imagine Neymar, right? He brings his friends everywhere. Yeah. And that's what he died, this guy did. And he gave them like stupid jobs just so that they can feel as if they were useful. And there's the, the, the agent of this guy, the actor, is called Ari Gold. And Ari Gold actually exists in real life. And he's like known for doing shit like this. And he's like the most hilarious character ever. And then if you kind of read a little bit about the real, what the real person does, the real Ari Gold does... It's like so close as well, and it's hilarious. Like if you ever have, if you just wanna, um, uh, like the 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 show is like very good energy. Like you you will like it for sure, uh, but then you will just have moments where you just cry in tears in terms of laughing. Like it's, that guy okay, is just yeah. I'll, hilarious. In Torridge, it. it's called In Torridge. It's amazing. It, yeah. um, okay, and the music. What kind of music? Because I, I don't think I've ever asked you this question actually. I don't know. I kind of like I like a lot of stuff. I honestly depends on the mood because I listen to like rock and uh, like soft rock like uh, i mean hard rock and soft rock i don't i just li- don't listen to metal mm-hmm. and like stuff that's like really heavy i i don't like it uh, you don't like, I don't like it? the sound no and um i like uh rap i write i like hip-hop and i like uh pop i like uh i like i don't know i like everything like i like the instrumental music as well so yeah. i like like i want to just like every, like good music like whatever it is it has to just be good i don't know how to like i don't really i, I don't have like a favorite band 
or like I have a favorite singer or something. I just like good songs. So whatever is good, whatever fits the mood or someone links me a good song, I, I like it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like, we... I like a lot of songs used from the playlist you had on Spotify. I, oh yeah, I, the, I the Bonri one. I was yeah, I was listening to it. I like a lot, like a lot of songs from the playlist. So wait, wait. I, I like I like your song, the one the uh, the Mohicans or whatever. Oh yeah, Last Mohicans. Yeah, I like I like that song. That it's was really amazing. happy. It's really happy song. Yeah. Um, I I'm, I like this mel- melody. Like I like good melodies, you know. Yeah, same, same. I like good melodies. Sometimes yeah. I will. I, like, I, that's why I'm not so much into ra- into rap, because unless the melody, unless the bass I, is like I, melodic. I like, yeah, if it's a really good beat or like really yeah. good like temp- uh, sample. Yeah. Know, uh, yeah. Uh, otherwise, I I it's like whatever. I mean, it's fine if you're in the car and you have the big boss system and you're like, <laughs> then that's okay. But it's not it's not like I I'm, I yeah, don't I, I like the melodies as well. Um, but in, when I'm in the gym, like I listen to some weird, sh- like it's all of a sudden it's like instrumental music. Then it's like some death metal. Then it's like some uh, it's some pop. Then it's like you know it's just so weird. Like nothing makes sense. And that's the one replay list. I, I there's I have now seven one replay lists actually. No six six. Oh. I have to go to the seven soon. I have to I have to share with you. Okay okay. Uh, the new Show one. Me. Pretty good. And, and then apart from because you play League of Legends all day. And every time I ask you, do you like any games or anything like that? No, you always say League of Legends, only play League of Legends. Is this still the case? Like, is this just your only thing that you do? Is there any hobby that you sneak in? Uh, well, last split, I was trying to play a little bit of Fortnite, like with uh, teammates and like play some other teams. You were insane, actually, at the beginning. And it was like, I was pretty good because I was playing no season. But uh, I don't know, it, I figured out that it's just like I'm competitive, so I want to like be better than the two, and uh, it wastes a lot of time because it's actually really addictive Fortnite. And it also get like at some point it gets boring. Yeah, it gets boring. And then when you don't play it and you try to play it again and you're actually bad at it, I, I tried to run it up and I ran it for five minutes and I just quit because that was too bad. So I just see VA being bad. Again. And everybody's like so good right now. Everybody's building yeah, so fast. Exactly. I'm like, I get yeah, so pissed. Yeah, I, I really see VA playing. Yeah, so yeah. I see VA playing. I mean, so I don't really play all the games at all. I play, I practice guitar, play guitar in my free time. Depends on like how much time I have or how much practice I have because like the last two, three weeks, no, three, four weeks, I mean the whole split actually, since even before the split started, I've been playing so much solo kitty split. That's why I can like play at a super high level, like consistently. So I'm just, I just like it actually. But I, like recently I'm feeling like, like I played too much. So I will just like calm down a bit. I go gym. Five times a week. Uh, sometimes I'm yeah, in the I, I can see it. You're getting, you're getting big. Should I flex as well? <laughs> no. When um, you flex, it looks fucking good. And um, yeah, so I play guitar, I go gym, and I play league. That's what I do. That's my life right now. And you still enjoy league? Yeah, I, I enjoy you it. You love it? I enjoy it a lot. I mean, some, like, for example, right now, the last days, I've been feeling like a bit like I play too much, right? So I, because I feel like sometimes when I like play so much solo queue and then like five games in a row are like pure. <laughs> like really, like the game is can, like. Can, can we just, just make sure you put a, an X here. Yeah, yeah. And then you type lul or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Feel free. Like pure, like, I don't know, whatever. And it's just like. Muted. <laughs> I can't even like play the game basically. <laughs> I just can't play the game for five games in a row. And I'm like so tilted and I just take a break, you know, and play guitar or watch a series and then play again. Like I get, I, even though I get like stressed out or like burned out from solo queue, I like refresh it so fast. Yeah, you get re-energized yeah, with like 30 minutes really of reading or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like I get like, I, I really have a lot of urge to play it, you know. So, Do you meditate? No, I actually don't because like, I've been, I've been doing it before, like on and off, you know. I mean, sometimes like 30 days in a row or something, but then like something happens and I just stop and I just like, I don't know, I see beer or something. Maybe I should again, you know, because it's actually useful. I think I think it is useful. Like I think I, th- I think so too. I think it helps, you know. But I think why I don't tell myself to do it because I do stuff to actually take time off for me. Like I walk to gym and it's like fifty minutes walk back and forwards. So I just I don't even actually listen to music anymore. I actually just go outside and appreciate, you know, a bit. Like I just take a deep breath, you know. And I just breathe, you know. I I, I, right. I kind of meditate on the way there, you know. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't actually works. like I don't do like with an app, you know, and like actually full focus. But I 
try to like, just like focus on my breath and like not think about stuff too much. And yeah, I so I do meditate, but not in the way where I sit like down and like I'm really like focusing super hard on meditating and sweating, you know. So it's uh, more like mindfulness while walking and not really enjoying fresh air with the 30 degrees out the 30, 35 degrees outside. Yeah, you know, you but... enjoy the fresh hell outside. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's tough days. It's, it's insane, you know. I'm really not used to like this kind of weather, so. I actually haven't gone to gym yesterday. I will go today in the evening when it's like 10, 10 p.m. or something. My gym's um, air conditioner is like actually very low, so I sweat like a pig. Yeah, we, my gym doesn't have air, air conditioner, I think. <laughs> well, maybe, I, actually, maybe my gym doesn't have air conditioner either. It's just... <laughs> yeah, like you go to, like, on the way to the gym, I'm already sweaty as fuck. Yesterday, I actually went outside and I, I had to take off the shirt and I was still sweating. So I just couldn't, I, I don't know, it's impossible. It's not a bad thing to sweat actually in the gym. Yeah, I mean, it's not, yeah. All, mean, all the tryhards are just going with the hoodie and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> in The Rock, you see when he's in his Instagram videos with the, with the hoodie. Jesus, just sweating. Yeah. From everywhere. And then I actually, lately I'm doing sauna as well, which with this heat is uh, a bit of a JK. But, but uh, it's, it's pretty good, actually. It's pretty good. I mean, it's good, no? Like, you take sauna we, we, we should, we should, shower. We should hit the gym together and then go sauna together. Okay, okay, let's do that. Um... Like like a good Finnish group of friends. <laughs> Finnish are all, all the time in saunas. It's yeah, insane. They are. Yeah, it's insane. Sure. They, didn't well done also like do a lot of sauna. I mean, not really. I mean, he likes to do go sauna, but I mean, can't really do. I mean, he didn't really do it in Berlin, I think. Okay. So. okay probably so it, he probably does it in Finland. It's a, it's a fake Finnish. Yeah, yeah, he is a fake Finnish. It's a fake Finnish. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, that's it, man. Thank you very much for, for being here. I know you have to go train Yeah. Uh, very soon. How do you feel about today? How do you feel? Uh, you going to fuck some shit up? Uh, I feel like I'm going to like drink some tea, black tea, and I'm going to be super ready for script. <laughs> Dalai Lama, man. That's some <laughs> Dalai Lama League of Legends bullshit. <laughs> I love it. No, I love it how it changed, man. It's so much. Like, three years and a half ago, if you tell me you're going to drink a, a black tea and, <laughs> and then go scream... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So get that, get out of here, you know. Yeah, I would take a Kinder Bueno before scrims. <laughs> yeah, uh, I remember actually, like, fun fact, like, on our boot camp for 2016 spring, we were in this office and or like two, yeah, downstairs, two, two below, and uh, we like we had a table and there was like whole box of Kinder Buenos like in a in like a triangle like really like oh, five yeah. here, four here, like three here, two here, one here. I did that, and then after. Like I would get one like small Kinder Bueno for each solo kill I would get in streams. Like I would get like so fat every day. Like I would eat like Kinder Buenos, Dominos, and mm. uh, <laughs> bananas every day. <laughs> and mm. then we would go to like to a Chinese restaurant nearby, which is actually pretty good. Yeah, it's I pretty really good. I really like it. Like I, it's I actually go, like one of the best there. Chinese restaurants I've been at. Like, it's pretty good. It's actually like so good, I think. Yeah. So I like that restaurant. So that was my diet back then. Yeah, Kinder Bueno. <laughs> Kinder Bueno and Chinese food. Yeah. Oh no. Well, man, thanks a lot for coming. Thank you for having me. And um, just keep kicking us. We we are all uh, looking forward. Actually, this is this, this weekend against Fnatic, right? Yeah, it is Saturday, I think. Yeah. I am. Uh, I've never been scared when I was a player, but I'm so scared now. Every game, on every team, is ridiculous. Yeah, it actually makes sense. I so scared. I've, I've not been a fan of something like for so long, and then I started watching Croatia during like the World Cup. And, and all of a sudden, you just you get like so connected really fast. Like you, so true. Like every game I watch, I'm like so I wanted to score. You know, I have, I have. You know, I I don't have a choice. I don't have Croatian people in my family. I don't have a choice. The the French flag is waving <laughs> outside. Like you, you, the French flag of my home is so big <laughs> that you can actually see it from a fucking airplane. I think if you go, <laughs> if you're about to come to Berlin and see a French yeah. flag. Then that's probably my home. Actually, it's good thing we didn't watch the finals together. <laughs> Maybe some some clash of conflict. <laughs> I no, I mean I, I I had a conflict with Rose because I was uh, waving on every goal for everyone. <laughs> I was just there, you know. Um, anyway, man, thanks a lot for coming. Thanks a lot for being here, and uh, we'll we'll meet again soon. One on one, we go to the gym and we make some content as well there, uh, and show each other the power of our pecs. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, Ben. Appreciate it. And yeah. actually, wait a second. Before we go, you want to say something to those watching? Yeah. So, hey, hey guys.
Hey, hey G2 Army. Um, I would like to thank you guys for like supporting me and G G2 since the like the old dark days that we don't talk about. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, like we're gonna keep rocking and we're gonna stay together for as long as we both have the same goal of winning. So maybe very 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 long time. And yeah, like we are never like gonna drop. So thanks for supporting and sticking with us and. See ya in Madrid. Love it. Love it! Fucking Madrid as well. I mean, I have some yeah. crazy shit th uh, in, in my mind for Madrid. You do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have some crazy shit in mind. I haven't even shared it with anybody yet. Holy shit. It's my crazy shit. I'll share it soon. And uh, and heads will roll. It will be insane. I have, I was, yeah, I, I, I've heard about the facility. The facility leaks. Bro, that is... The facility in Berlin is going to be insane. The, the facility leaks, yeah. It's going to be insane. Oh well, everybody. Like, like, what is it actually gonna be? I we're still on camera. <laughs> yeah, we are, we are, we are, we are. Oh, we're yeah, still it's, on fine. No, it's fine, it's fine, we are. Uh, uh, I, 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 I can't tell. But it's gonna be insane. Like nothing. There's no team that has this. Okay. It's amazing. Really big or? Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Not now you got us alive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, we had Luka Perkovic. Which got second in the World Cup, as you guys know, and got the MVP. <laughs> no, that was Griezmann. He got the second. No, he got the MVP. No. Modric got the MVP. Yeah. Modric got the MVP. Uh, we had him here. He spoke about League of Legends, spoke about what his hobbies are, and spoke about the team a little bit. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. He's amazing, and we'll have him back here again. And uh, yeah, thanks so much. And as always, let me do the double, uh, the double promotion of the website of the of the shop, because after this. You're going to see an outro in which I'm going to be talking to you, uh, promoting our shop. But before, I pro before we promote our shop, let me promote our shop. G2esports.com slash shop. We have, by the way, a new line of products coming in. It's going to be amazing. So check it out. Uh, we have uh, the Canadian jersey, which is selling quite well, and you're receiving one. Yeah. The actually, US jersey, which is selling quite well, and you're receiving yeah. one. <laughs> And we, the Kronovi jersey as well. Kronovi the t-shirt. Yeah, we have the Rocket League t-shirts for all, all of you uh, Rocket League fans. Uh, we have the white one also around. I, I don't think you can buy it yet, but you will be able to. And we have a surprise one that I wore not too long ago on the LC, in the LCS. So check it out, g2sports.com slash shop. And is there a code? Code is g2 podcast? podcast so the code podcast for some uh discount i think it's like five percent or something like that use it we love you see ya